Keysight's InfiniVision X-Series oscilloscopes offer a broad range of power-related measurements with the power measurements option. This video is part of a series of several short videos on specific power supply related measurements. Here we show a simplified schematic of a switch mode power supply, along with a list of measurements that can be performed on the power supply to fully test and characterize it. In this video demonstration, we'll focus on performing the RDS on and v or VCE sat measurements on a power switching device which is highlighted in green here. For our demonstration, we'll be using Keysight's Switch Mode Power Supply Demo Board. This is the same DUT that we use in many of our hands-on workshops around the world. The first task in making an RDS on or VCE saturation measurement is to probe the switching device with voltage and current probes. You'll typically need a high voltage differential probe and a clamp-on Hall Effect current probe. This particular power supply demo board has PCB current loop traces built right in to make current probing easy. But when making current measurements on your DUT, however, you'll typically need to create your own wire current loops. Let's start making measurements. I'll begin with a default setup so that we can set everything up from scratch. Next, I'll go into the Analyze menu for which we have a front panel key, you can do that directly. Then select the power application. Next I'll pop up my list of possible measurements I can perform with the power option. And by the way, we have videos on all of these. And I'm going to select RDS on and VCE. Next I'll go into the signals menu. Here I can see a diagram very similar to what I showed earlier. It gives me some helpful hints on how to connect my probe. So I've got my differential active voltage probe connected across the drain in the source. I've already done that. And it's going to channel one of the scope. And I've got my current probe connected uh, to the source terminal of the uh, switching transistor. And that's connected to channel two. Next, I'll simply press auto scale. When you do that, it automatically optimizes the scaling of the voltage waveform, which you can see here is yellow, the current waveform, which is green, and then it scales two switching cycles across the main time base window, and then it zooms in to the center 50% portion of the conduction phase. This is uh, where we're going to measure RDS on or VCE if we happen to have a bipolar transistor. And this is the zoom time base window that's expanded in this part. We're almost ready to make a measurement, but uh, another very important thing to do, notice down here it says offset calibration required. To measure RDS on, we, we need to know the average current and the average voltage during this phase. Uh, but it's very difficult to accurately measure that average voltage. Any, any oscilloscope offset error or any additional uh, offset or balance error from the probe will induce significant error. Uh, we're looking at a, a signal here that's about 40 volts peak to peak. Uh, many applications could be hundreds of volts and you often need to measure down in the tens of millivolt range and if there's any offset error um, that can induce significant error in this particular measurement. So we need to perform an offset calibration so let's do that next. I'll press offset calibration I get a note up here that it tells me it should be performed at the settings I'm going to use for the measurement. We've got the scope all set up. We're not going to change it. I press OK. Next, it instructs me to disconnect my voltage probe from my device under test, short the tips together, and here's zero volts, or what should be zero volts. It's going to me measure what it is and then compensate for it. So we'll press OK. Turns on averaging, makes a very accurate measurement of the average voltage here in that time window. I'll connect my voltage probe back up. Next, it tells me to disconnect my current probe, which you can see here, lock it, and then it says to press the DMAG 
uh, button, or sometimes call it a, a degauss button on the probe. I'll do that because the probes can build up a, a field on them. And then I can also manually adjust the offset. So I'll get it as close to the ground indicator as possible, but it still may not be precise. Now I'll press OK. Turns on averaging and measures what's actually there when there is nothing there. Or measures what the scope thinks is there. So I connect everything back up, press OK, and at this point we're ready to make a measurement. So all I have to do is press apply. And here I can see I've got a FET device. My effective drain to source resistance is about 170 milliohms. The average appears to be about 171. And VCE, if I had a bipolar device, I don't. This would be more, more important if it was a bipolar transistor, is about 140 millivolts. Now that I know what the approximate value of RDS on is, I can actually use this value and automatically perform a switching loss measurement. Down here I can select Use RDS on, and it says do I want to start a switching loss measurement and use the mean value, which would be this 170, and the answer is yes. Now it's going to rescale the time base, and it's going to turn on the switching loss measurement. Uh, let's turn the statistics off here, and you can see we're measuring about 140 milliwatts of loss across one switching cycle, which is shown here in the zoom time base window. So what the scope is doing, uh, we can go into the settings menu. You can see that it's plugged in at 170 milliohms. And now, the purple waveform you see is the power loss waveform. Um, during the conduction phase, it's multiplying current squared times the measured value of RDS to come up with the power waveform during that phase. But then during the turnoff phase, it reverts back to conventional volts times amps. And in many cases, this will give us a much more accurate measure power loss. Now you also have the option of entering any va value you want for the RDS on. Let's say I looked in a data sheet and it said, no, it's 190 ohms. I could plug that, or not 190 ohms, 190 milliohms. As mentioned at the beginning of this demonstration, this short video was part of a series of several short videos on specific power supply related measurements. To learn more about InfiniVision X-Series oscilloscopes and how they can help you test and debug your power supplies, contact your local Keysight authorized distributor and ask for a demonstration. Thank you.